The American Recovery and Reinvestment Act that I will sign today, a plan that meets the principles I laid out in January, is the most sweeping economic recovery package in our history. At the one-year anniversary of the stimulus, it is turning out to offer not just economic recovery, but also democratic political recovery. Democrats have basically three things to do between now and November. One, they need to get good candidates to defend their open seats. Number two, they need to pass health reform. And number three, they need to embarrass Republicans on their hypocrisy. The stimulus has been a gift-wrapped opportunity for Democrats to show how Republicans have denounced Democratic legislation in Washington for political effect, and then admitted in their home districts that that legislation works. It shows not only that Democratic policies work, and when push comes to shove in their home districts, Republicans know it, it also shows that Republicans care so little about policy that they're okay with holding totally nonsensically contradictory positions on important stuff. Dozens of congressional Republicans who have praised, say, the stimulus at home while denouncing it in Washington seem to be unembarrassed about how two-faced and incoherent it is to have those two positions simultaneously. At least they have seemed to be unembarrassed. Tonight, I am pleased to report, we have some early signs of embarrassment. Among those snared in the stimulus hypocrisy web is Republican Senator James Mountain Inhofe of Oklahoma. Last week, we noted that Senator Inhofe had proudly attacked the stimulus over the course of the past year, but he was caught touting stimulus spending in his state as, quote, great news. In light of that reporting, Senator Inhofe has gone for help to a conservative media outlet called CNS News. Complaining about us, he said, quote, she would now like her viewers to believe that because Senator Inhofe praised stimulus money going to Oklahoma, that Senator Inhofe is somehow a hypocrite. Hardly. That was the quote from Senator Inhofe's office. Uh, for the record, Mr. Inhofe's office has not asked our show for a correction. Um, and in fact, none will be offered. I understand that being called a political hypocrite is an awful thing to hear, but you can't just insist that you're not to be called a hypocrite if your record indicates that you are one. Senator Inhofe, in fact, praised toxic Superfund cleanup spending in Oklahoma that was part of the stimulus. He praised it as great news and necessary funds. Then he denounced the stimulus that provided those necessary funds as something that didn't work. He told this same outfit, uh, CNS News, that the stimulus bill was nothing but social engineering and welfare. Oh, and those necessary funds that were great news for my state. If you are both praising something as necessary and saying it doesn't work, you are a hypocrite. You may not want to be called a hypocrite, but the solution to that is don't act like one. <laughs> don't just complain about people who accu accurately report how you do act, okay? Same goes for more than a dozen other Republican lawmakers singled out by the Wall Street Journal today. Congressional Republicans, including Paul Ryan of Wisconsin, Sue Myrick of North Carolina, Gene Schmidt of Ohio, Senators John Cornyn and Kay Bailey Hutchison of Texas, Bob Bennett of Utah, not to mention the entire Alabama congressional delegation. All of these Republicans have been caught on the record requesting stimulus money for ways they thought it could help their states and districts after voting against the stimulus and trashing it as something that was useless. You guys, it's either useless or it's useful. It cannot be both. Now, the Wall Street Journal obtained letters that these Republicans wrote requesting stimulus funds. And the evidence is amazing. It's certainly nothing short of damning. Uh, in her request, for example, Jean Schmidt of Ohio writes, quote, this project will not only save jobs, but create multiple jobs within Southern Ohio. Paul Ryan says the funds will help, quote, place 1,000 workers in green jobs. Alabama Senators Shelby, Richard Shelby and Jeff Sessions, they write, quote, this money would help provide jobs for chemical applicators, foresters and others who would be involved in the state's Konkin grass eradication and control program. Senator Bennett of Utah says the addition of federal funds to these projects would maximize the stimulative effect of these projects on the economy. These projects will help the economy of Utah. Sue Myrick of North Carolina, this is genius. The stimulus fund would, quote, lead to solar energy related jobs in an area hard hit by unemployment. She also calls it a critical step in bringing economic opportunities to my congressional district. 
We have an urgent need, she says, for a workforce that is truly prepared to contribute to the green economy. So says Sue Myrick, member of Congress, on her letterhead, writing and asking for these stimulus funds that we're going to provide all of these useful things in her district that she's simultaneously saying is a totally useless program. These Republicans are acknowledging in writing that the stimulus is good policy, that it works, thus proving that they don't mean it when they denounce the stimulus as worthless. It is worth noting that today's expose on this was published in the conservative Wall Street Journal. The other big expose on Republican hypocrisy was published in the last week in the ultra-conservative Washington Times. These are conservative papers calling out Republicans for hypocrisy. This is the important thing here. The hypocrisy epidemic among Republicans is trouble for them in politics this year. And that's not just because it energizes Democrats and liberals and reminds them of why they believe it's important to keep these guys from taking the majority again. It's also important because it separates Republicans from the people the Republicans would like to have as their own base. The Republican Party chairman, Michael Steele, for example, met with self-styled Tea Party leaders today in Washington. What's his message on spending going to be to those small government, anti-Washington conservatives? What's his message going to be? Vote for us, half the time we'll say we agree with you, and the other half the time we hope you don't notice. Joining us now is the chairman of the Democratic National Committee, Tim Kaine. Mr. Kaine is also the former governor of the Commonwealth of Virginia. Uh, Mr. Chairman, thanks very much for joining us tonight. Nice to have you on the program. Always glad to be with you, Rachel. Thanks. Uh, let me give you a chance to correct me first on something that I made up. Uh, I said <laughs> for what Democrats need to do to win in the midterms this year is they need good candidates for open seats, they need to pass health reform, and they need to make sure everyone in the country, left, right, and center, uh, knows about Republican hypocrisy on policy. D does that bear any resemblance to the actual Democratic game plan? Um, you, you pretty much nailed it. I mean, there is one more, which is we've got to continue to push forward with with uh, programs like the Recovery Act so that the economy continues to improve. Two quarters of GDP growth in a row is good. Job losses dropping from 720,000 a month to kind of almost net even is good, but we've got a ways to go still. So that would be my fourth element. Obviously, the president's been focused on that since day one. Uh, but the other three are right. You know, we're going to tell the success story. We're going to point out Republicans who have been engaged in this hypocrisy, uh, acknowledging that the stimulus is, is good good uh, while pretending before the Republican cameras that Congressman they're against Phil it. Phil Gingry of Georgia voted against President's stimulus package. Yet there's Congressman Gingry, front and center, pink tie, grinning from ear to ear as he passes out stimulus checks to the, uh, or a stimulus check, one of those big oversized ones, to the city of Cedartown, Georgia, to build new streets and other projects. He voted against the stimulus, he spoke out against the stimulus, then he takes credit for a stimulus project in his own district. That's Gingry. Then there's Congressman Mike Castle, Delaware, Republican. That's Castle on the left. He voted against the stimulus. He then showed up when they passed out the check. Now, we don't have enough time in the show to show you all of these guys, but here's Governor Bobby Jindal of Louisiana. You remember all the comments that he had made about this. He's a Republican. He criticized the stimulus, and then he toured his state from city to city to pass out the checks for it to his constituents. And then there's this. According to the website, thinkprogress.org, yes, I know, it's a liberal website, but still, they document that 111 lawmakers who voted against the stimulus, I mean, they go through page by page by page, ex showing every exact time when it happened, right there. Every lawmaker who voted against the stimulus called the idea all sorts of names, 111 of them. They're also taking credit for stimulus projects that land in their states and districts. How many Republicans voted for the stimulus? A big giant goose egg. Nada. Zero. Nilch. How many are now going out and being a part of the process where they take credit for it? 111. Jessica Yellen is the White House uh, right to fight back against the so-called party of no with this argument that they're making sure all media outlets know about? Yes, and it's uh, why so late is the big question, Rick. This is a good gotcha moment in politics for uh, the Democrats to use against the Republicans, not just because of the apparent contradiction here, but also because these are folks who are campaigning on a message that's anti-spending. And 
when you see these Republicans out there taking these checks, promoting government spending, uh, they're going to make an argument for it. But a lot of their voters, the key voters who have to reelect these Republicans, are going to be very mad because their own base is anti-spending. They will not like to see these elected officials who they put in office spending government dollars. And this could hurt those Republicans in the polls come November. You can bet you will see a ton of Democrats running ads showing those Republicans holding up those checks and making the point that uh, they are spending government money just as fast as anyone. There's no